AI is a hot topic in many industries right now, especially the music industry. I'm Rosemarie Miller, and today I have Kevin Griffin, songwriter, founder of the band Better Than Ezra, and author of The Greatest Song, joining me to tell us more about AI in the music industry. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kevin. Rosemary, I couldn't be happier to be with you today to talk about this uh, timely subject. <laughs> well, Kevin, before we get into AI, I kind of want to know about you and being a songwriter, like what's it like being behind the scenes of all the action? Um, well, I have the unique uh, perspective of, of starting off as an artist with my band Better Than Ezra in the 90s and having success and continuing to do that. And then kind of segueing into being a songwriter. And uh, I realized that at one point, uh, my time was best spent not only writing for myself as an artist, but also putting more irons in the fire and writing with different artists. And, and I and I love different types of music. So, you know, being a, a songwriter for hire and writing with other writers, but usually artists uh, uh, proved really fruitful for me. Um, at first, you know, having to take off the artist hat and 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 serve uh, and to help another artist um, reach their full potential as far as you know writing songs for them was a bit of a transition because you get used to being you know the person uh, that's the focus. Um, but in short order, um, I really realized that that I, my strength was as a songwriter, and I love I love getting with an artist and do, doing the due diligence before a write. And learning where they're coming from, uh, you know, listening to their music, e even going on socials and seeing where their heads at and, and what they're about. So when I get with them, I get to try to make them um, take what they do and, and do it better. Um, and it, it's so normally as an artist, you know, I you have an album cycle, you write a group of songs and you go out and tour it. But as a songwriter, I'm writing songs for everybody all the time. I'm, I write four or five times a week. Uh, different artists. So every time I do it, I have another shot at having a hit with a different artist in a different genre. So it's been a great, uh, it's been a great career and it keeps my own uh, songwriting fresh and young. You know, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, um, but I'm working with artists usually in their twenties, maybe it's, if it's a TikTok artist in their late teens. So by working and listening to, to constantly to new music and being inspired and being challenged it keeps my songwriting fresh and uh it's just been a blast uh it's it it's it's a great uh endeavor so with your songwriting <clears throat> do you believe the moment is going to come where ai technology just takes over that takes over that job what's what's the point of you being a songwriter when an artist can easily go to ai technology um i i, I see AI from a few different perspectives. Uh, one, the first perspective is, it would be the the scary part of it. Um, right now, it hasn't happened. We've all heard the Drake song that that was, you know, AI being a Drake voice, or David Guetta put out a, a song that had a fake Eminem uh, AI voice. What, what's happening now, and, and it's just a matter of time, maybe by the time this this airs, there will be a, a song that is written completely by AI. By and so it begs the, the question: Who will own that song? Well, the, the tech company that developed the AI. That uh, what will it be? Chat, chat be GPT, or will it be another uh, AI that we don't know about yet? Because I assure you, there are computers right now combing the past fifty years of hit songs and what that algorithm is. What are the what are the chord progressions? The melodic intervals that humans react to time and time again. And there's probably some very similar hallmarks for, for hit songs from the past 50 years. A computer is going to see that and come up with a song that'll be amazing. And maybe they'll have like a top line artist sing it, some artists we already know, but the music will be written by AI. So when that happens, and I think it's within a year or so, that's gonna be a scary time. And how good will it be? Because right now, the ones I've heard don't sound competitive, but that will change. So on one hand, that means even more marginalized songwriters. So that's the scary part. Now, 
you know, what I've seen, whether it was in the 90s when Napster came along and everybody thought that was the end of the recording industry, when Sean Fanning and BitTorrent streaming and all that stuff happened with every new um, technology. This time it's AI. There's always opportunities. I was talking with a friend of mine named Sam Hollander, who's a very successful songwriter. Um, and he and I were talking about how we both use AI with lyrics. You can you can type in a chat GPT, give me, um, I want lyrics to a, a, a up-tempo pop song with quirky lyrics about staying up all night in New York City and seeing the sunrise. And then you hit enter and you get a whole song, all the lyrics written to a song. Now, it's not great, but there are some amazing words in it. You know, I know songwriters, very big hit songwriters, they, they're they writing their first verse of lyrics and their first chorus of lyrics. And then they give it to chat, chat GPT, say, write us the second verse and write us the bridge. And it's really good. Then then the but the, the, the big uh, test is then you take the lyrics that, that the AI wrote and you put them into Google to make sure it's not just taking existing lyrics from another song. And it's not. So it's it's free to use. So I see it from both sides. One, it's gonna it's it might marginalize songwriters even more. I think that time is gonna happen. And, but also it's a tool for creativity. So I kind of see both um, sides of the coin. So aside from just songwriting, how do you think AI will impact the music industry overall? Um I think that there will be a, a big disruption. Um, it's, a, it's going to be a bit like the Wild West. There's going to be uh, new players in the music industry. The, the tech companies that own the AI that's really good and is writing hit songs um, is going to start to exercise a lot of power. Um, I think that songwriters, uh, songwriter groups um, like Sona, um, Recording Association, um, they'll be challenged. Uh, but at the same time, uh, some of the big labels, Universal, Sony, Warners, they're big investors in the AI. So, you know, just like they're big investors in the streaming companies that don't pay songwriters very well at all, it'll, it'll be in their interest to promote the AI. I mean, so I think that we're in for the next five years will be a very illuminating time. I'm always, I'm a tireless optimist though. I see it as uh, we'll find our way. There'll be some scary moments, just like there was when, um, when file sharing happened with Napster. But ultimately I think that authenticity will win out and um, the songwriter will use this as another tool. So let's go, let's go back to artists. I, I've heard those songs you mentioned, like the Drake, the Eminem. I, I've heard yeah. some of those and they're not very good right now. They're not very good right now, but really. one day I do believe they will be very good. Mm. So will this be something that artists actually like kind of embrace? I don't have to get up and go to the studio and sing this. It already knows my voice. Or will they still want to do that? Is that part of the art? It, it will be all different ways. If you're a huge marquee artist and your IP, your intellectual property is the sound of your voice, your Taylor Swift, your Drake, your Eminem, um, and you will license your voice to AI to make a song, you'll have to you'll, you'll have approval rights um, ultimately. So if it's something an artist is is good with they'll be happy. Um, it, if this sounds seamless and it sounds like, and it sounds like Taylor Swift and it's a really great song, Taylor Swift might be happy, you know, to give me songwriting credit and, you know, performance credit and a, and a bit of the, the master. Um, so I think that is good for artists. Uh, but, you know, we love going in into the studio. Um, I think that, we're we're a, a bit away from that moment when you know artists don't even have to go into the studio, but you know it's moving at such a fast rate. Anything could happen. Um, and and you kind of touched on the the legal implications. Can you dive deeper into the ethical and the legal implications of AI music? Um. Well, if 
it, it's going there, there will be there are going to be lawsuits because there's going to be people who say there's going to be a hit song with a voice that's going, all going to be computer generated and the company the tech company which many of them have significant ownership by the labels not surprising is going to say this is a entirely synthesized voice it's not uh using the sound of any other artist but there will be an artist that says that is my sound so the inevitable lawsuits will happen um i think that as songwriters could potentially could be marginalized um not being used every songwriter has a style too imagine ai I, you don't even have to say imagine ai right now is looking at the song at the catalog of the beatles of paul mccartney what are the hallmarks of a beatles song and we all know when you hear a song it's sometimes you say like, wow that sounds kind of like a beatles song every artist has a sound stevie wonder has a songwriting style kevin griffin i don't think i do one but all the time people say hey man was that tiger lily song that country song yours or that howie day or the taylor swift song breathless that she sings is that one of your songs i'm like yeah they go i knew it you know so we have a style so ai if it really is truly ai and a lot of people call ai artificial intelligence uh you know like it's sentient like it has a um self-awareness in reality they're just advanced computer programs um but the, the time is coming when um uh it really will have sentience and it's going to be a, a, a scary moment for sure and so how will ai impact how consumers consume music whether it be streaming services well maybe i think that one thing it will do it, it, you already know that when you listen to when you listen to spotify spotify already knows your listening habits and when it when it gives you suggestions for new music friday or different stuff it already knows what rosemary's uh you know what what music you like or kevin griffin's music i like and it suggests a more music um, I think now um, there will be even more uh, um, accurate modeling of what people want to listen to. And, you know, if there's also the potential of a product placement and just even more insidious uh, ways of of marketing, whether it's through songs or advertisements uh, to the listeners. Um, so I think, and then, and you won't even know it's happening, that kind of thing, uh, which is the scary thing. Um, so I think, go ahead. So what advice would you give to those in the music industry going forward, knowing that AI is here? What advice do you have? I think that to be vigilant, to to don't say, it can't happen or AI will never replace the that intangible thing that I do as a songwriter. Because the, what a lot of people think of when you hear a song, it seems like this ephemeral thing that is floating in the air. But when you look, look at it, if you look at music on a page or even music on a computer screen, whether it's Pro Tools, it follows melodic math. It's very, it, it adheres to principles of physics of bars and beats and sound waves. Those things are easily analyzed. Um, so I would say to songwriters, educate yourself about what AI is out there, what, what it's doing. How is it going to be a challenge? Use the songwriting groups that are your advocates, BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, the Recording Academy. You know, there will be times when just like the Music Modernization Act was a bipartisan law that was passed several years ago to address the inequities that songwriters are getting in the streaming world, there will be new lawsuits and new movements to support songwriters. So educate yourself as a songwriter. Know what's happening with AI. Don't assume it it can't subjugate you as a songwriter because knowledge is power. And then also, while you're doing that, just by osmosis, you're going to get exposed to AI. Use it as a tool. Use it, like I mentioned, use it as a songwriting tool. Um, so I, I do think uh, ultimately 
um, we'll see AI as like, wow, that was really crazy times. I mean, I'm looking, we're going into the future now. We're like, wow, can you believe that it was nuts? We thought it was the end of songwriters. Little did we know it was going to be this great tool to make us better. Little did we know that now my voice, I get to license it to all these people around the world. And AI is using the sound of Taylor Swift's voice or Kevin Griffin's voice or insert big artists. And I'm, I have this whole new income stream I never knew was possible thanks to AI. But what? But but that's all contingent upon educating yourself, knowing what is out there, what your rights are, aligning yourself with groups that can be your advocate. Thank you so much, Kevin. My pleasure.